Hi, good morning everyone. This is Deborah. Today we're going to talk about some of my experiences with online dating. I've been on there on and off for about 12 years. And at the moment, or maybe it always has been just entertainment. Uh, <laughs> I even put in my profile a secret word to make sure that they read my profile. Only one out of a hundred guys actually do, because guys are visual, they only look at your pictures. Um, so, another problem is they um, will contact you even if they live clear across the United States, you know, and then I have to say, sorry, you're not close enough. Uh, what do they expect? me to do or any girl to do it get on a plane and fly over there uh so that doesn't work either and i will get probably 30 of them a day where they're calling you know or they're texting from other parts of the country and then the other issue with online dating is they never ask you for a date they want to keep texting you if I get two whole pages of texts, I just block them because they're not sincere. A guy who really wants to date you will will say, can I have your number? Can I text you? I want to ask you out. Where do you want to go? Those are the guys, the go-getters are the ones that's going to get a date. So here's some things that I did wrong on some dates that I have been on. One of them is... You don't let them know what car you're driving because if you let them see you walking to your car, they're going to stand there waiting for a kiss or they're going to stand there seeing if they can get a crotch shot, right? This is why I don't wear dresses anymore <laughs> on a date. Uh, yeah, they'll, they'll do that. And then plus they can get your tag number and if they have contacts, they can find out where you live if they have a... A friend who's a cop or maybe they're a cop who knows i had one guy bring a gun into applebee's and he was waving it around and showing it to me honey that doesn't impress me i i really got a little scared about that um let's see uh one guy showed up 200 pounds heavier and i think if you're if, if you're at the dating part spot first hide behind some wall because this could help could save you because he got an eye shot of me he knew i was there but if i had been hidden you know behind a wall or something i could have seen him and just left right because if someone is lying about 200 pounds you know they're going to lie about other things uh, a lot of the guys will not give you their real age one guy said he was like 57 and he was really 65 because he he's a dumb ass. He showed me his license and it was a lot older than what he said. So once a guy lies to me like that, I don't I don't date him anymore and I don't talk to him anymore because uh, that is bad. I don't lie about my age. I'm almost 66. Uh, like I said, one guy wanted to... He thought because he bought me dinner, he had a right to fill me up. And uh, he watched me walk out, people. This is what's bad. You should stay in the restaurant and wait till you know he's gone. Uh, don't walk out first because he was following behind me. And then he accosted me in the parking lot. And that's when he asked if he could, you know, cop the feel. And so, girl, stay in the restaurant with other people until you know that they have left the building. Um, I had one guy who wasn't forthcoming with the fact that he wore a wig. And the minute I figured it out, because it looked really, really bad, I just said, I got to go. I got to go home. Well, this guy followed me all around the beach. And he kept, he finally, and I'm pretty good at, losing people because I used to have to lose my mother when she would follow me when I was 16 in my car but he found me which is really scary and so I knew then that he was going to be a stalker um 
so he's trying to he's trying to bribe me with gifts and you know going to hand me a big bag of some really good stuff and i said no if a guy's not going to let me know he's got a wig you know if i have a wig on i tell them uh but this is my real hair uh but it was really just strange that um he had this big mop of hair and it really wasn't styled it was like any minute it was going to fall off his head. Uh, but um, I asked him out for a beer. I was specific, people. Specific. We meet up and he orders a Coke. Okay, well, he should have said in the text, I don't drink beer, sorry. But he led me on to think that he did. And so I'm thinking maybe me and him could have, you know, a couple drinks and then go home. And, and no, he ordered a Diet Coke or whatever. So... That upset me. Um, also, I had one date that I was engaged to him for about two years. He would always expect me to drive to his house, which was an hour and 45 minutes at least. And I finally said, you think you could give me some gas money? I'm always going to your house. Uh, yeah. And one day he was, uh, he wanted me to, go back to his house and he slammed the trunk. I guess he had too much testosterone. Yeah, because he told me he was on it, you know. And I said, no, if you can get angry over this little thing, then you have some anger issues. He got so mad at me, you know. Uh, let's see, also, let's see. The same guy would not walk next to me in a store or a grocery store. He would walk five or six feet behind me. That is a big red flag because they don't want anybody in their community to know that they're hooking up with you. So watch out for that. And if you're with a guy that always plans the weekend according to what he wants to do, lose him, honey. Lose him fast. That happened to me. Um... Let's see. Uh, I'm going to think of some other things. Uh, yeah. Uh, I'm very leery about I was take, uh, taking my dog. I had a little dachshund. And if they have a dog, if any of those dogs do a little bit of a mess, your dog's going to get blamed for it, people. Your dog's going to get blamed for it. I went on one date where the guy was pretty cool, very good looking. He goes in the bathroom, comes back. He's a different person. I knew he was taking some sort of drugs because when he came back, he was really high. He's bouncing off the tables. So he asked me for a second date and I go, no, you, you got some issues you need to get over. Uh, and the last thing you want to do is ever let them know where you live. Even if it's the third or fourth date, don't do it. Because I dated this one guy. It was like our third date. He was at my house. And he, he was rubbing my back. And he goes, you know, I can overtake you. I jumped up and said, get out of here. Get out of here. Oh, so I have many, many stories. Uh, but it is very, very dangerous. Now, here's the most dangerous thing that I came across. I had never dated anybody. I didn't know the rules. I didn't know what to look forward or not to look forward to because I was married for 40 years and only I was with him for 42. Well, I needed someone to watch my dog when I went to uh, Ocean City. So I had been communicating with this man and um, he came over to get the dog. That was a mistake. I did not know the dangers. This was the first time I ever went out or not. I didn't go out on a date with him. He just came over to my house to pick up the dog. Uh, seven days later, he brought back my dog. She's covered in fleas. Oh, my God. And my house had been broken into. And um, I kind of realized that he had something to do with it because he said, don't go in that house. A lot of the windows were broken. Uh they violated uh, my sex toy box. Um, it was a horrific scene. Thank God I used to be a cop because I used to type up these B&Es and they were usually very similar to this. 
Uh, so I knew he must have had something to do with it because he said he was a retired lawyer, but he asked me for $20 for gas. Oh my God. So then he, when he, when I went upstairs and saw the mess, he had gone in the house, which is a no, no. If you know there's a crime scene, you don't go and pollute it with your fingerprints and such. But he held me really close. He wouldn't let me go. He goes, I know you're scared. I know you're scared. Come and stay with me. And he kept saying that over and over again. And I had to like push him away. Because uh, nobody's going to scare me out of my home. Uh, so it was a horrific scene. And seven days later, it was broken into again. So that was the first time in my life that I've ever had to deal with a break-in. And I really think he had something to do with it. I mean, the cops were fingerprinting people, interviewing them, asking them if they would do a polygraph. I mean, but it was never solved and that breaks my heart uh, because I did have a lot of my jewelry stolen and, um, and the cops never, even wrote up a police report because the the cop that did board up some of my windows, he got terminated the next day. So the police report was never done. So when I had to put a claim on my insurance policy, because I had an extra rider for like 30,000, they just refused to pay. They thought that my ex-husband had something to do with it. Well, I can tell you by the the, the, the scene of the crime and the things that were done, my ex, he was still my husband at that time, would have never done that, okay? Never, never, because I had a picture of our daughter on my nightstand and that picture was violated, if you know what I'm trying to say. Yeah, so people don't even let anybody know where you live under any circumstances until you've been with them for a couple of months and you've ran a police report. Oh my God. Okay. I hope I've educated you. Bye.